Today, President Trump invokes the Defense Production Act. What is it exactly? We will fill you in on that. Also, Canada and the U.S. agreed to close the border. <gasps> That's so racist. Uh, also, an internal memo reveals Philadelphia no longer arresting people for a long list of crimes. What could possibly go wrong? The commissioner offers clarification. We'll see about that. We've got a lot to get into, and it starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Uh, what is this? Day three? Day three of self-quarantine. But uh, those of us who are apparently expendable get to still come into the studio and do the show. With me today is Chad Prather, host of the Chad Prather Show. Oh, Rambo, you know I am expendable. <laughs> who you may not recognize because he's not wearing the cowboy hat. He looks so dapper today. Sometimes I like to dress up for the end of the world. <laughs> hey, you know what? We'll take it. We'll mm -hmm. take it. And then we have Jason Buttrell, who did not, in fact, dress up for the end of the world. <laughs> no, no. Chief researcher of the Glenn Beck program, Jason Buttrell. Thank you guys for being here and risking your lives to uh, come talk the news with me. All right, President Trump announced today that he will be invoking the Defense Production Act in an effort to help the private sector ramp up manufacturing and distribution of emergency medical supplies and equipment. Uh, this act was first enacted in 1950 as a response to the Korean War and has since been reinvoked more than 50 times since. Now, it's obviously supposed to help streamline production of medical supplies, uh, help battle the coronavirus epidemic, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, ventilators, masks, things of that nature. Um, Chad, what are your thoughts on this? Well, yeah, I like the fact that he uh, is now labeled himself a wartime president. Uh, and we are at potentially that type of scenario where these supplies have to be created faster. I, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I just know Donnie looks tired. <laughs> he sounds tired. His hair's on point. Yeah, well, his hair is always, <laughs> always on point. His hair will be on point, point until the day he dies. Uh, but I, I, there's so many things that I want to unpack, so many questions that are there that I have about this, and I don't know that there's answers out there. You certainly can't go to the media right now because there's so much fake news and so much bad journalism and, and no objectivity in the reporting. So... Uh, I, I think it's a scramble. It's a, this is an unheard of, unprecedented situation that we find ourselves in, and everybody's kind of flying blind. I mean, the antenna's up, but we're not receiving a whole lot in terms of what we need to do and direction to go in. Yeah. Um, Jason, I want to get your thoughts, but Chad says that President Trump looks tired right now. He did give a brief address on this uh, Defense Production Act. Let's listen to a little bit of what he had to say. We'll be invoking the Defense Production Act just in case we need it. In other words, I think you all know what it is, and it can do a lot of good things if we need it, and we will uh, we will have it uh, all uh, completed, signing it in just a little while, right after I'm finished with this conference. I'll be signing it. It's prepared to go. So we will be invoking the Defense Production Act. Jason, he does sound a little tired there. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he, how many, he, so he hates, we know he hates reading off prompter, hates reading off script. He's in his element when he's just with the guys, you mm -hmm. know, or just at a rally where he can just be one of the people. But now it's every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, he's being forced to read very serious things off these scripts. And you can only imagine. Like, what's insane is he's almost bionic with the fact that he seems like he gets younger the more he's a, a the more he's a president yeah. any other case you can see the wrinkles and the gray hairs mm -hmm. form almost weekly it's they usually have uh, like a before and after oh it's uh, like you know uh, george w and obama trump will look the exact same probably yeah or younger <laughs> yeah. but but if anything this right here you can tell it's getting to him cuz he's he right now he's looking at you know he's sitting in with the cdc and he's probably looking at heat maps daily of new outbreaks or what's the potent, what's the worst case scenario and that's got to be frightening i mean l i'm actually glad we don't see a lot of that stuff because i don't want to know the worst case scenario for everything mm -hmm. just don't just don't want to know that well but, he corrected a journalist today uh, a reporter who's asking a question about you know what do you think you know you think this about this and he said i don't think i know you know, so he corrected him. So he is privy to information, as all presidents mm -hmm. are, to things that the rest of the general public doesn't have. I still push back on those folks who want to say that Trump is a selfish, self-serving, narcissistic president. Look, 
we're not going to compare uh, quality traits of, of a person's character or their personality, but let me just say, this guy didn't have to do this job. He never had to do this job. He never had to put him through this kind of stress. He didn't have to put himself through this kind of stress. He doesn't have to do this. This is, this is the face of a guy who's carrying a burden. It matters to him. Anybody with any sense of psych psychology in their brain can see that this guy's carrying a burden when it comes to He didn't have to do this thing. He could flippantly pass this thing off. He could resign. He could move on. He could do his own thing. But here's a guy on the front lines, day in and day out, keeping a nation abreast of what's going on in terms of our circumstances. Yeah, selfish. Those same people said that he was very dismissive of this. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, he wouldn't, you know, he's, he's deathly terrified of what this might do to the economy. He's making moves right now that are detrimental to his presidency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. He's just doing them because he has no choice. It's his job to do it. So that, that's really infuriating. How about you just read this. Twitter is a dumpster fire right it now. It is. It's horrible. From what a lot of people on the left are, are saying, you know, about this. Like, oh, it's all Trump's fault. You know, well, he's the one that causes such bullcrap. Mm -hmm. Such bullcrap. And the whole thing with the whole... China virus, Wuhan virus, I'm just about to explode on that. Yeah. It's all, you know, there's a, th there's a th thing called misinformation, there's a thing called disinformation. Misinformation is if like, you know, let's say Russia says, no, you know, we don't have soldiers in Crimea. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's wrong. We don't. Everyone knew they had it, but it's misinformation. It come from Russia, you don't trust what they say right. anyway. Mm -hmm. Disinformation is an old Soviet tactic. And that's when you somehow get a trusted source over here, that being our mainstream media, to report on something as if it's a fact. They feed them information, then our trusted sources reporting on as a fact. That's what you're seeing right now with this whole China virus, Wuhan virus, and how it's taboo to say that. It's coming directly from the Communist Party in China. Mm -hmm. This is what they want. But since you're reading it in the Atlantic, you know, <laughs> or on CNN, which is hardly considered a trusted source anymore. Yeah. But even still, a lot of people watch them. I, I, it's just unbelievable that they're falling right in line with the communists in China. And, mm -hmm. and just in case uh, those of you who don't spend your time on Twitter because, I don't know, you love yourself, unlike <laughs> us, who we just apparently love misery. Uh, so there have been several different reporters, White House reporters, who have gone into these press conferences and asked President Trump, why he continues to keep calling it the Chinese virus because, I mean, can't he understand that there's a stigma associated with calling it the Chinese virus, mm -hmm. Chad? How can he be so insensitive to call something a name, give it a name that corresponds to the place it originated? He knows where it came from and he knows why it came from there. And that's a significant point. Why did it come from there? It was a very purposeful thing that I believe was released on the part of the Chinese government to control protests in Hong Kong. They did not give the information. Whether that's true or not, we know for a fact they did not warn the world as quickly as they should have. We could be way ahead of this thing if they didn't. So call it the Wu flu, call it the Yangtze River virus, call it the Sumting Wong. I don't care what you call it. But it's what it is. It's where it came from. And I know everybody wants to talk about it's racist and blah, 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 blah. I'm so sick of that word, so tired of it. It's absolutely ridiculous. It originated in China. It's just like Lyme, Kentucky, all right? I don't have any prejudice against people in Lyme, Kentucky mm -hmm. for the Lyme disease, right? Or the Zika River or anything else. So or this is just... It. And let, by the way, if you're defending the Chinese government or the nation of China at all, I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. I got a problem with you. Yeah. So. Perspective, guys. Yeah. Perspective. The, 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 I'm just reminding me about what we were talking about at the top where he was he, just in that press conference where he was mentioning, I think you all know what this act does. It's kind of funny. I think I, I, I laughed right when he said that because actually no one really no one knows does, what it yeah. does. <laughs> I was like, all the reporters was, are like, uh, you know, yes, uh, we know exactly what it means. <laughs> um, I, I know very little. The only thing that I can remember about it is, and this is, this really shows you the wartime footing, which you mentioned, Chad, is that Every company, that if they get an, an order from the U.S. government, that instantly goes to the top. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what other orders they were trying to go for. It, it's exactly like if, you know, we were trying to build ships and we went to a steel company. Mm -hmm. That was first. It doesn't matter if some other company wanted to build a, a building or a skyscraper. The ships came first. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually happy about that yeah. because the one thing I'm worried about, and he mentioned, the president mentioned ventilators and stuff like that. Those are the things that I'm concerned about. And I remember, and we give a ton of facts on tonight, Glenn's show tonight, we're going to give you just, say, the media doesn't really care about 
any of this really. They just care about you know pointing out things that you can be afraid of and then pointing to one specific person to blame for it. That's, that's the only thing they care. If they actually cared about informing you, they would lead with the facts. You know, like right. what are the demographics? You know, like all these things. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do tonight. But the biggest thing to worry about this is if it's a small percentage of people that are in ICU and actually need to go on a vent ventilator. But in high population areas, those small percentages can overwhelm uh, hospital beds. There's only th like about three hundred thirty thousand hospital beds in the country that are open for new patients to come in. They're expecting four point eight million introductions into the hospital admissions into the hospital in yeah. two months. Hey, Baltimore's got a plan. I saw where the mayor came out and said that they need to stop shooting each other in the city of Baltimore That's because smart. they uh, need the hospital. But they, and he said, quote, clogging up the hospitals because there were seven people shot overnight. What a plan. <laughs> Wow. Well, I mean, if uh, COVID-19 can't bring us together to stop shooting each other, I don't know what can. Social distancing is bringing the stabbings <laughs> way down. <laughs> the stabbings. Now, the shootings with scope, I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Jason, you mentioned one of the provisions of the, uh, the Defense Production Act. The, a couple other ones. So, number one, you mentioned companies uh, are required to accept and prioritize contracts from the government and That's prioritize <laughs> materials. Well, okay, so there's three more. <laughs> You're going to learn today, Jason Buttrell. Uh, the second one, and I am too because I'm just reading it off of my screen, as you can see. The second one provides financial measure, measures such as loans, loan guarantees, purchases, and purchase commitments to speed up the production of materials mm. needed. Uh, it addresses voluntary agreements or what the government says is a, an association of private interests approved by the government to plan and coordinate actions in support of the national defense, uh, which permits business competitors to work together to plan and coordinate measures to increase the supply of materials. And then it provides the government with the authority to obtain information from businesses and authorizes establishment of the National Defense Executive Reserve and Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, which, which works on the effects on national security of certain mergers, acquisitions, and takeovers related to foreign investment in the U.S. That sounds so, kind of scary. Yeah. I it, don't really like What could that. possibly go wrong with that precedent? <laughs> yeah. And that's, I guess, why you know it's been invoked probably a lot more times than it's supposed to have been. Yeah. But right. Those and, are the, yeah, and what have we learned from that, right? I mean, th this, all this sounds good and sounds like relief, but is it? Mm. And I'm sorry for interrupting you, because I, I, but that's the thing. I mean, I want your perspective on that. I think we're in many ways opening a Pandora's box and saying, okay, once we start doing and invoking these certain things, can we put that back in there? Oh, uh, that's one of the, uh, that's probably, number one, I'm concerned mostly about the overwhelmed hospital system and, mm -hmm. and deaths because of that. Number two, I'm most worried about that. Because this is, we're going to be fine. Let's say, let's give us, you know, maybe a couple months. Let's say it's like China. They're starting to go back to work. Things are opening back up. Um, so let's say we give us two months and we're out of this. But what have we started right now? Yeah. Like, I don't know, like what emergency provisions for the hospital system that could eventually lead to Medicare for all yep. type thing? Because those, cr those cries are going to come. And again, the president is on very shaky ground right now politically. Because they're his, the people that are going to attack him, even though they're going to be lying about this nonstop, they're going to, the, the one thing I remember several months ago, we're like, he's going to walk to re-election. The one thing that could hurt him would be a down, you know, turn in the economy. economy yeah. Coronavirus, which we didn't expect. <laughs> here comes the downturn in the economy. Some people are predicting, like, not only great recession, but even depression type mm -hmm. figures on the economy. Now, I, I don't, I can't imagine the president gets re-elected at that point. Yeah. Look who's coming right in. You've got... Uh, uh, Joe Biden that could be naming someone like Elizabeth Warren, who it's, that's been rumored as his uh, vice president. Now, they publicly would say different things, but they both believe in the same thing. They both want a Medicare for all type system. Biden just wants to go there slowly. Warren just wants to have it. Yeah. But they want the same thing. So these are the types of things that if we're not careful in what we do now in a time of emergency, mm -hmm. if we don't have like, like say for instance, the, uh, you know, the thousand dollars, you know, the payments, like if which, we, which we are going to get into a little bit. So after later that. on, but if we don't sunset things like this, so whatever emergency measures where it's quarantines, lockdown, if there's not a sunset period, 
then we've got to take a step back and say, look, we, we can't just do anything hasty here. There's right. got to be time limits on these things. You right. can't just sign something and say, oh, we'll get around to getting rid of it later on. No, that's full stop. Yeah. Uh, so up next, we are going to get into the stimulus package and uh, the kind of the ins and outs of that, what the White House is saying about it today. And by the way, if you guys are like upset because you think that we're speaking critically of President Trump, I've seen a couple of you like, how dare you say that? We're still voting for the man. We're not talking about you. We're talking about the general public and we're talking about what history has taught us when it comes to when the economy looks good and when the economy looks bad. Okay. So calm down. We're all on the same side here. Uh, so we will get into all of that next. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Black Rifle Coffee Company is the reason that I'm sitting here today and able to keep my eyes open. <laughs> because, you know, when there's a little pandemic going around uh, the globe, I don't particularly sleep. Do you? Yeah, Jason probably sleeps like a baby. Yeah, I don't I do. know who I'm asking. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't sleep in these times. And Black Rifle is really getting me by. Uh, they, Evan Hafer founded Black Rifle Coffee Company in 2014, uh, along with Matt Best, who you have seen on this program as well. And uh, they kind of combined their two passions, developing premium roast-to-order coffee and, of course, a commitment to supporting veteran, law enforcement, and first responder causes. Um, Evan actually started roasting the coffee in 2006 to bring with him while he was overseas, and he refitted his Humvee uh, to roast coffee during deployments. If that's not dedication, I don't know what is. It is the best tasting coffee that you will ever have. Um, they roast it whenever you order it, so you are getting the freshest coffee available. If you're like me and you need an extra pep in your step, I highly recommend the calf blend. It is double caffeine and it will get you going for the day. Trust me on this one. Uh, you can check out Black Rifle Coffee Club as well. Uh, they will send it directly to your door. So you're going to get a discount on whatever you pick for your monthly selection. And then they ship it directly to your door. So you're not going to run out of coffee during your self-quarantine time. These are hard times. You don't need to leave your house for anything. They ship it directly to your door. How convenient in the middle of a pandemic. You got to go to blackriflecoffee.com slash Y. If you use promo code Y, you will get 20% off of your first order. That includes Black Rifle Coffee Company. That's a discount on top of a discount. There's no reason not to do it, you guys. Blackriflecoffee.com slash Y. We'll be back in a minute with more. Uh, we talked yesterday about the stimulus package that the White House is proposing. They have said today that if the coronavirus stimulus package is not passed, unemployment could hit as high as 20%. Oh, come on. Jason, you think that that's, I think that's, that's pushing it? I, that, what that sounds like to me is that's the administration wanting to get the senators to vote on it soon. Now, and just for perspective on this, uh, at the height of the 2009 recession, unemployment barely topped 10%. Right. And great in the Great Depression, it was 25%. Yeah. That, so just to give some perspective, tw now now they're talking 20%. So in I've 2020. I've seen economic models where they game plan like the worst case scenario out, and they and they get into Great Depression type numbers. But I just don't. I just I can't. I personally don't think that's going to happen. My boss probably would, would be more on board with seeing how that would work <laughs> out. But I don't, I, I personally, I, I don't see that happening. I don't think it'll be that bad. I mean, we're talking two months. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's hopefully best case scenario. We're talking two months of disruption. And then whatever the ramifications, I am nervous about the ramifications of, like we're already w working off of a deficit, you know? Right. It, it, it's insane. The spending levels are insane now. Mm -hmm. I mean, before the virus. Now we're adding on trillion dollar. This was this a trillion dollar uh, package you're looking yeah, at I now? Yeah, th I think it was. Well, some reports were a trillion. Some reports were 850 billion. And they just which at that point. And they just passed another one re uh, recently. <laughs> so yeah, it's. I mean, it's insane. I don't think we ever actually recovered from the 2008 crisis. They just printed more money and they mm -hmm. threw debt at every at everyone. And not only us, but the entire globe. That debt bomb is going to explode some point. I think this just pushes it further down the line. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know even how. I mean, there's no one in Washington that's going to even talk about scaling back spending. Yeah. They're not. I mean, it doesn't matter. Each side does not, does not care to talk about no that. One, no one cares anymore. And that's not, going to, that's not going to change. Yeah. That's going to keep going. Uh, Chad, some of the, the uh, parts of this particular stimulus package, I know that they've floated the idea of small business loans for small businesses. They've talked about uh, the Democrats at least got through in the House their paid family leave, mm -hmm. paid sick leave uh, for up to two weeks. Small businesses are also mandated to do that. I mean, 
if you don't have the funds to be able to pay people what, when they get sick, even though they're not there? Oh, well, I guess for small businesses um, with the thousand dollars. Now, today they're reporting two thousand dollars per person that President Trump talked about yesterday. Are, are there any of these ideas that you're hearing that you're like, yes, that's going to work? I don't like any of them. I don't like any of them because I believe it is one step into the government having an iron boot on our neck. At what cost? OK, so you get a thousand or two thousand dollars. What, what comes out of that? Maybe nothing, but it could be everything. It could be one more step that leads you into an abyss of governmental control. And I said this on my show already. There's no conservatives left. The government has expanded so much, it's going to continue to as this big green monster that consumes everything in its path, and it's in control, right? And as conservatives, for so long, we have talked about being independent and small government and limited government and governing ourselves and our communities and our homes. But what are we on? We're on the government tit, right? And so many people, when they hear something like this that comes out, they immediately say, hey, mama, run behind the door and give me a bite of that. You know what I'm saying? They, they want the government to bail them out. Now, I'm not talking about the people who are in genuine need, the people who truly need help. That's one thing. But these folks out here who... It frustrates me, I guess, and I've been in hard times. It frustrates me to think that at some point in time, you didn't have enough forethought in your life to put $1,000 back. If $1,000 was really going to change your life in the midst of a crisis, are you telling me that you didn't have the, the wherewithal to put $1,000 or $2,000 back somewhere for a rainy day? It is, it is absolutely that. And by the way, I mean, just talk about the obesity rate in America. We don't, we don't hesitate to feed our face every day. We do that, but you can't at least, so you've done this to yourself, and now you need the government to help you. At what cost? At what cost? That's the thing I don't like about it. Jason? I'm pretty much exactly in agreement with Chad. I, um, I, I don't, every time these, you know, things are floated, they sound good in principle to people that might be affected by it. But the implementation is always almost impossible. Let's take, for instance, like a wealth tax. Mm -hmm. Like, for the people on the left, that sounds awesome. But when you actually add, uh, analyze it, it doesn't create much wealth. I mean, it doesn't create much money. Mm -hmm. um, most, most nations just ditched it because they didn't even know how to really do it. They were like, well, there's all these millionaires who are now fleeing the country in mass. They don't want to get hit. But they're all saying, like, hey, we don't have that much cash on hand. We've got all these things that, that are worth a lot. But how are you going to tax? See, it's almost impossible to do it. But yeah. you, that doesn't stop people like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren making that their rallying cry. Ask them how they'll do it. They won't even really tell you how or how effective, right. they won't even say if it's effective or not. But it, it whips people up. Yeah. Now, for this thing, let's say you give a 1,000 people, like, for every American, like, or every worker, like, that makes no sense. I don't need the money because we're working from home primarily right. at, at this place, so I'm not out of a job. So I don't need it. What am I going to do with it? It's not going to stimulate the economy. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it in the bank. Save it. It's yeah. just going to sit there. Yeah. That does nothing. It doesn't stimulate the economy. I think most of the people responsible, that's what they're going to do with it. But the people that would need this would be like, let's say the in San Francisco, where many of these businesses, like if you own a bar, you own a small yeah, they're pub. They're forced to shut down. You're forced to shut down. That's their government telling you that. Mm -hmm. So I could see him getting something from the government. Look, we force you to do this. Here's your compensation to try and hold, hold out. But they're not doing that. They're just massive welfare pretty much to everyone. And most of us won't even need that. Yeah. So I don't... Seems a little frivolous yeah. to just not, I mean, you, you feel like there should be some sort of a, you know, like questionnaire or flow chart of does this person fit this description? No. Okay. They probably don't need the thousand dollars right now or yes. Okay. Let's send them a set amount of money just for right now. But I can't handle the comparisons to Andrew Yang's uh, universal oh, basic income. They're like, oh, well, you guys were making fun of Andrew Yang for okay. proposing a thousand dollar UBI. Now it's that's ridiculous. We're not saying forever. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> In a time of crisis, right. it's completely different. We're not saying we want people beholden on the government for the rest of their lives. Right. They're just talking about, and it's still it's still questionable in the minds of conservatives whether this should be done or not. But it's completely different saying, okay, I'll give it to them in a time of crisis, like a time of war or something like that. Right. But that's stupid. That's insane. Chad, last word. Well, uh, well we just look. I support the president. Ryan Weaver and I just wrote a song and released it called He's, He's Still Your President. Everyone right? needs to go download it, by it, the way. You can get it wherever songs are offered. It, right. And the official That's video crazy. of it came out today. It's on my YouTube and elsewhere. We believe in that. But it's amazing when I post that on social media, the people who come out 
and they say, you know, not mine, the Trump train's derailing and all that. Well, you're on the damn train. Do you not have a problem with that? Oh, look at that. With you know, it's you know, all of his Dow Jones stuff is gone now. All of his gains in the stock market are gone. How do y'all feel about that? How do you feel about it? Okay, the plane's crashing. The pilot's going down. You got what you wanted yeah. in this regard, in this circumstance. Are you happy about that? Mm-hmm. And apparently they are. Well, and but to your point, I saw you uh, make a remark about this on social media before that um, for all the people who said he's not my president. Don't cash that check when it comes in. When he sends you a thousand or two thousand dollars, don't cash that check. He's not your president. Send it right back. So. I mean, look, if you believe it, send it to Universal Health Care Fund or something like there you that. Go. I mean, give it away. Yeah. <laughs> Just something to consider. We're just saying. Uh, we have more to come, but first we want to thank our sponsor, Freedom Project Academy, who is a new sponsor. So listen up, you guys who have not heard of Freedom Project Academy. So uh, usually when we talk about Freedom Project Academy, it's because parents want to protect their children. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Parents want to protect their children from left-wing propaganda and indoctrination. So now you've got school districts that are actually closing down because of coronavirus. You have a reason to really think about and consider an accredited online education from Freedom Project Academy. Just saying, if you're going to do online learning, you're going to do it from the school district who's indoctrinating your children, or you're going to do it from Freedom Project Academy. You can do it from the convenience comfort and safety of your home. They can receive uh, your children an accredited classical online education built on Judeo-Christian values. Now this is K through 12. So all the way up through high school, your children can be enrolled. Um, It's completely interactive educational experience. Students attend live classes with other students across the country. You've got to look into it. They are teaching students how to think not what to think. That is so important And in this day and age. You can request your free information packet today. Go to freedomforschool.com. That is freedomforschool.com. Request your free information packet today. Enrollment, by the way, had just begun right when coronavirus hit. So classes, as you can imagine, are filling up way faster than anticipated. Do not miss out on this information. It is so crucial today. Freedomforschool.com. Back in a minute. Uh, An internal memo detailing changes to Philadelphia Police Department protocols in the face of the coronavirus crisis is now all over the place. It's gone viral, uh, and the response has compelled the police commissioner to offer a clarification. I don't know what you can say about the clarification, because it doesn't really seem like a clarification, although they're calling it one. But uh, here is what the internal memo says. Uh, It says that they will have modifications to several of their existing protocols, including a list of offenses that will now be addressed via arrest warrant by the officer who is responding instead of an actual arrest. So effective, uh, I believe it was yesterday. What is today? March? Yeah, it was yesterday. It was March 17th. Uh, Arrests for the following offenses will be effectuated via arrest warrant, not arrest. You may not arrest someone. You ready? All narcotics offenses, theft from persons, retail theft, theft from auto, burglary, vandalism, all bench warrants, stolen auto, economic crime, bad checks and fraud, and prostitution. Uh, The memo also explains the arrest warrant process. Um, But so he got slammed for this, right? Rightfully so. Philadelphia got slammed for this. And he just said, listen. The Philadelphia Police Department is not turning a blind eye to crime, okay? We're sending them a note in the mail, all right? (laughs) Okay, I added that last part, but uh, Chad, what are you... What are you doing here? Corn Pop was a bad dude. He ran a gang of bad guys. (laughs) One time they went over to Philly and they said, hey, no crime, no foul. Just because you did it don't mean you're guilty. (laughs) Jason. (laughs) It won't be long. There won't be nothing left to steal, man. You hipped to my job. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> so, are we in like the twilight zone? What is going on? Not just this guy, but <laughs> the story. So, yeah, the first time I heard about this, I don't remember them saying anything about a warrant. It just, no. it just said they would not arrest somebody right. to protect the officers. Then the clarification was the warrant thing mm-hmm. afterwards. Mm-hmm. So then again, so full on anarchy for an <laughs> undisclosed amount of time. Yeah. Pretty much, like, and these are these aren't minor crimes. No. 
These are like theft. I mean, well, right, like uh, stealing oh, because, a car. Well, in the middle of a pandemic where there's chaos <laughs> and nobody can find any freaking toilet paper, although who knows why the toilet paper is out because there's not a freaking digestive disease going around. But I digress. Uh, <laughs> you, there's all of these things that are missing right, that people can't get a hold of, what could possibly go wrong if you decriminalize theft? So th th this is absolutely insane. It's exactly why we have a Second Amendment, because things like this, government's going to do stupid crap, and you're going to have to protect yourself, because the government's going to forbid our men and women in, law in uniform from acting. You think they want this? I highly doubt it. It puts them in more more danger, at least down the line. Down the road. Yeah, right? Like, I, I just, I can't imagine that, th that they're on board with this. But... No, I, what's funny is these are the exact same things that all these very leftist district attorneys and attorney generals that are popping up all over the country, those same ones that were massively funded by George Soros in the past couple of elections for the, over the past four years. He's poured in millions to elect his guys, and every single one of them wants the same thing. They want to let more people out of the jails. That's happening right now, yes. and it makes no sense yep. to let them out. There, and every single one of them said there's not an outbreak of the virus in the jails. <laughs> Why are you letting them out then? It makes no sense. They're safer in the jail. I, that's what I'm right? thinking. If there's, no, if there's no outbreak that's happened, why would you not keep them in there? Yeah, you're, you're sending them out to get infected. Yeah. Not, that doesn't make any sense. They were literally quarantined. They, well, yeah, they were under a quarantine. <laughs> But so, the, but there's those things, and then also the uh, decriminalization, drug de decriminalization, all the other things that they want to say. Oh, like in California, for instance, when they said, "Oh, if you if you don't, as long as you don't steal something over nine hundred dollars, right. all good, bro." They talked you about know, doing that in Dallas they, County. They did do that did for seven hundred fifty bucks. Yep. I mean, hey man, if it's legal, it ain't looting. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, <laughs> Wait, it doesn't Let's talk about that, what you mentioned a second ago, the Second Amendment, because I'm hearing a little buzz. I don't know if it's true or not, but something that I'm hearing is not only is the ATF talking about delaying background checks 30 days, now they're talking about the ATF right now is not taking any background checks if you're trying to purchase a firearm. New Orleans mayor is already coming. Now, if that's true, you ought to be livid. You mm. need to be calling your representative mm. if that's true. We don't know if that's true yet, but it's. I'm waiting on confirmation. I'm hearing it from a very good source. And let me let me also say, mayor of New Orleans has already said you can't purchase a new firearm right now. That's ludicrous. What happened? I mean, I don't. The, it, the founding Amendment. fathers apparently put an addendum in the Second Amendment. <laughs> you know, there must have been some kind of exclusion cause right. for this. You know, because they foresaw pandemics in the twentieth. 21st century. That what showed up in Invisible Ink? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's Article 2A, <laughs> point B. I mean, it's just, this is the weird times, folks. But what are you going to do? We talked about this on my show. What are you going to do? They show up, the government shows up, South Lake, Texas. South Lake, Texas sent out a memorandum this morning, whereas, 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 one of the things says, hey, we can take your property, we can take your home. If we need to use it for hospital facilities or quarantine facilities or put people in there, mm -hmm. the, the mayor sent out a, a memo to the, to the city of Southlake, which, by the way, is the third most expensive community in the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. Yeah. We're not talking about podunk here. This is kind of stuff that's starting to get very, very unconstitutional. And again, why? We're willing to let the iron boot be on our neck. But what are you going to do? They show up at your door and say, hey, we got all these folks out here that are sick. You got to get out of the way. We got to put them in your house. And they're standing there with machine guns and the whole deal. What are you going to do? Yeah. See, we've given them so much power. We're all on the tit. The, there's, there's been, we were talking about this before, but uh, off air, but the, there's literally been no advocate for small government since what? the late 80s. Yeah. I can't think of an effective speaker that could actually stand in front of a bunch of people and say, this is why you know, I'm a conservative, and this is what it means right. to be a conservative. So every since then, we've had expansions of government upon expansions of governments going larger and larger and larger. So when you get into a crisis like this, then people are willing to just roll over and show their tummies yes. when the local government comes in and says, you can't buy guns and I'm going to steal your property. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what? Mm. Right. Like, no, like, you literally can't do that. But everyone's rolling over and showing their stomachs because, okay, fine, you know, what, whatever, whatever's good in, for the public good. You know, oh, we've given it away. We've it. given it away. I mean, property tax, uh, all these things. I mean, that's not constitutional. No. I mean, it's not constitutional, but we've done it. We've and done it because they said we got to. And it's we also it's also why you said that people haven't thought about being fiscally conservative. They haven't thought about, you know, leaving just a thousand dollars, you know, just in case you need it and just not touching that and leaving it there. Glenn Beck's having a field day. Like, <laughs> finally the end of the world. <laughs> like, Armageddon has come. Crack open some prepper food. <laughs>
Let's make some gravy, Tanya. I, listen, <laughs> it's happening, right? It's happening. I love you, Glenn. Uh, but I admire Glenn. I admire the forethought. Glenn's been doing this for years. Glenn's caught a lot of crap over the years for this. Uh, Glenn inspired me a long time ago to prepare for a rainy day. I've had a few rainy days, things that were unexpected, whether it was an ice storm or something that put the power out for six weeks or to the situation right here. I hope I never have to dig into those sur surplus supplies. I hope I never do. I hope I never have to shoot anybody. I hope I never have to use one bullet for any form of defense. I hope nobody ever comes and kicks my door in. I, I don't want any worst case scenario to happen, right? But why in the hell? I mean, put a little silver, put a little gold, put some bullion in the safe. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with having, put some extra 22 bullets in the safe. Now, is that probably going to happen practically in Texas? I don't know that bullets are going to be the best form to barter, but I got a lot of whiskey. <laughs> and I did break a whole gallon of vodka on the driveway. And I'm not even drinking it, but I got it because you never know. I might have to do surgery. You know, I might have to pour something on somebody and, and cut them open. You never know. <laughs> And on the, you never know, Sarah. <laughs> Lots word, Jason. And on the government side, there's tons of things that they could be advocating for. Like, how about prioritizing charity over handouts? Yeah. Make it easier for charitable organizations. We got a ton of them here. We got a ton of rich people in this great country. Help them facilitate need. Like, right. you wouldn't need to have a government mandated from our own treasury thousand dollars when we have charitable organizations set up to do that. Help them help us. <laughs> there's got to be someone that's going to be able to stand there and do that. I, there's many things that they could do, like, you know, uh, increasing the tax, uh, you know, uh, uh, deduction that you get when you, when you dedicate, or dedicate, when you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When you give donate. to one of these, when you donate, donate thank donate. you, to one of these organizations. So many things, but their mind is not in that. It's in creating another agency, another government program to do it for you. And that's not what, that's has not what Mike America Bloomberg bought any uh, ventilators, any, any of that? I mean, has he used his, I mean, he promised you everything on the debate stage, sure. but has he used his, any of his 60 billion to buy Great. some of that? I'm going to guess no. No. I'm going to guess no. No, because they're full of <laughs> 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 All right, back in a minute. <laughs> Uh, this morning, President Trump announced, obviously on Twitter, because that's how he announces everything uh, <laughs> these days, he announced that uh, the United States would temporarily close its border with Canada. He said we will be, by mutual consent, temporarily closing our northern border with Canada to non-essential traffic. Trade will not be affected. <clears throat> Details to follow. Uh, obviously, the two countries are in advanced talks about this, but this was a mutual decision to stop the spread of coronavirus. Chad, why is it that President Trump is so racist against white I never people? trusted those white people in Canada anyway. <laughs> I don't trust them at all, man. You got the Jim Carreys of the world that come down here and make a billion dollars in Hollywood and then want to institute socialism in our country. I've said we needed a northern border wall forever. And we need to have, a, instead of having a way to get in this country, I think we need to have about five big old slingshots or catapults <laughs> along the northern wall and just sling those bastards back over there. <laughs> just, whoop, just watch them. We could televise that and just watch them fly through the air. Just, thoom, thoom, thoom. There goes, there goes, uh, we send Nickelback back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Justin Bieber, y'all can have him. We'll keep yeah, Ryan you're Reynolds. Have Justin Bieber. I mean, now, this whole thing is is funny. I mean, it, 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 we, a nation has borders. It's got borders. It's got borders. And I mean, what else is happening in the news today? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of things going on in the world. Things didn't just stop happening in the world. But we've gotten consumed with so much dumb stuff. I mean, serious stuff in regards. But it's just we we take it down into the minutia of the stupidity, mm -hmm. and that's where we're at. And this right here definitely proves the hypocrisy of the left. It's true, Jason. You know, people, I think, who are in favor of strengthening our southern border would probably use uh, one of many reasons. They would say, well, there, uh, we have no idea what kind of diseases people are bringing in. And there has been evidence to show that, you know, people who are traveling up through the southern border have brought in certain different types of diseases. Um, but now, all of a sudden, it's totally fine and perfectly understandable and acceptable to close a border to make sure that diseases don't spread and we know who's coming in. Yeah. How, how did that, how, this doesn't add up. No, it doesn't add up. There's and no difference. The other thing that doesn't add up is that why has this not already happened with the Mexican border? Mm -hmm. The southern border makes no sense. You know what, I, I read that uh, Mexico 
Mexico was the one who was like, uh, yeah, we don't really want you Americans coming in yeah. right now. We're going to close off. Finally from see it from you our guys. Angle. Yeah, yeah, great. Donald Trump, the son of a bitch, finally got him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it, y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for them to say we're now paying for the border wall to start yeah, constructing. Exactly. That would be funny. Trump just like kicks back, lights a smoke. It was like, all right. <laughs> told told you. <laughs> uh, I, you know what concerns me on a very practical, very simple level? And these are the things that I think people overlook. And, and, and a big shout out to the folks out there who are truckers. The men and women driving these trucks, getting these goods to these stores. That's the beauty of capitalism. We may be running out of things on the grocery store shelves, but we can get it back. Mm, it comes back it. in yep. tomorrow and there's more stuff to go in and buy. Uh, thank God for capitalism and thank God for the folks who deliver it. Thank God for the folks who work the railroad, right? But what's concerning me is we're shutting down rest areas. We're making interstate travel more difficult. I mean, these folks have to sleep. They have to pee. They got to take a shower. Truck stops are shutting down. They can't go in and get the things that they're taking care of. This is the kind of stuff that concerns me. We're punishing the people who are trying to help us because we're trying to get so far down in the weeds with all this, this stuff that we're trying to, you know, make off limits. Yeah, we need to make Canada off limits, except Alberta. I like them. They're good folks. I mean, you know, but the rest of them, eh. It's just kind of weird. And we're focusing on stuff like that. It's like, let's remember, we're Americans. It's true. We're by God Americans. We haven't bought into the Justin Trudeau nonsense. We don't believe in that stuff. I don't need Canada. I mean, they can use the slingshots to throw goods over the... I mean, what are we getting from Canada anyway? <laughs> I will say, people are always like, well, Canadians are so nice. They would never want to insult you. Uh, Canadians on the internet are rude. Oh, they're the kings you, of, of the they southern... Are rude. Bless your heart. But, they're, they, <laughs> but they say, bless your heart, eh? <laughs> I, they're not even that nice to no, me. No, they're not. Oh, Amer oh you Americans. It's the America was from never Montreal great. and Quebec and, and Toronto. You know who you are. <laughs> and obviously, if you're not those people, then we're not talking about you. Yeah. So don't send us hate mail anyway. All right, really quickly before we have to go, Bernie Sanders, obviously big devastating losses uh, last night. Does he drop out? Oh, probably so. He's going to, he's waiting for the deed to the fourth house. And then he's going to drop out. <laughs> and of course, at, maybe it's changed as of the time of this taping. He has not dropped out, but they're Perfect. waiting to reassess his campaign. Jason, what do you think? I, I think that he's going to stick in as long as he can, yeah. because I think the closer he can get it to where there's even an appearance of a, con a contested uh, yeah. um, uh, election, I think that, or a convention, sorry, mm -hmm. I, I think that that behooves him. And I think that there is a small possibility that his bros could cause such a stir that they might actually think about giving <coughs> it to him. What? You know. Are you saying that Bernie Sanders knows that his supporters cause, like, problems and he's fine on, with it? I mean, just the fact that he pays them all on his staff and he hasn't fired them even though they've been exposed, yeah, I think that yeah. he knows quite a bit about huh. it. Shocking. Back in a minute. Uh. <laughs> Yesterday's poll, what are you doing during the coronavirus lockdown? 69, no, 70% of you said working. Yeah, that's right. That's America for you. 70% of you are still working. 15% uh, said trying not to die. 9, 10% said something creative. And 5% of you said tweeting. So that's the unproductive crowd, I guess. We were all, we asked this question yesterday and I was with Glenn and Stu and we were like, ah, uh, all of the above? All of them. <laughs> we're, we're over here doing all of them. So unfortunately you could only pick one. So I understand if you're doing more than one. Uh, today's poll, will Bernie's supporters vote for Joe Biden? What do you think, Chad? Some will. I, but I, again, I, I go back to a point I've made on another show here. Uh, their idealism is not going to let them do that. So what do you, do they stay home? Do they vote for Trump? Do they write in someone? What do you think? I mean, you know, generally? anarchists, what, are, what else are they going to do? <laughs> they, they don't have any sense of rules of bearing that are going to bring them out to the polls and do that. I think they figure, what's the point? It's a broken system. Why go support it? Yeah, the vast majority of them don't vote, period. They don't vote. Yeah. They don't vote. Yeah. They're, they're young. They're, they're radicals. They typically don't go to the polls. And they, that showed up in the primary. They didn't even vote for their own guy. Yeah. So, no. You know, it was interesting. You saw uh, the Bernie Biden results in Florida. And I kept wondering, I mean, how much worse was Biden going to spank him if all Biden supporters weren't at home for <laughs> fear of getting the coronavirus? Yeah. Would have been interesting to see. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. A lot of blue hair down there. <laughs>